All right, business math worksheet day 29. Under personal finance, we're now to stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And again, you're going to have this great big table. You may want to bring up one explain to explain what each of the things in the table say. Um, using the table, they want you to answer the questions. So they want you to find the earnings per share, first of all, which is the EPS on your table if you look at earnings per share. So in this case, $1.43. The second question wants the lowest price paid for a share of stock in the last 12 months. So if I look at my table, I have a 52-week low. That would be the low for the year, so $23.80. And then the last one says price-to-earnings ratio, and the price-to-earnings ratio is the one that says P-E ratio. And so the price to earnings ratio, 26.73. So just picking the information out from the table. And so if we look at number two, again it says use the information for Blue Northern Clothing Company presented in the table below, determine the following. The difference between the closing price today and the closing price on the previous trading day. So I want to find the difference between the two prices. The difference between the two prices is going to end up being this one that says the net change. How much did it change by? If I'm finding the difference, I'm finding the net change. $1.17. The next one says the percentage of dividend income when compared to the close, close price. The percent of dividend income when compared to the close price is the yield percent. So you're looking there under the yield, I-E-E-I-L-D percentage. And so my yield percentage, 1.86% is what I have there. And then the next one says the highest price paid for a share of stock. So that's going to be my 52-week high, 37.83. And so like I said, if you go to one of the explains, it's going to explain each of those things on the table but we're going to hit most of them by the time we look at our three examples. And so on number three, it says use the information for northern resorts and hotels presented in the table below to determine the following. The last price paid for a share of stock on this trading day. The last price paid is the closing price. So we look under the close price, and that would be $37.35 for my closing price, which is the last price I paid. The amount of income per share paid to a stockholder in the last 12 months. So your amount of income that you paid is called your dividends. So the dividend is 67 cents per share. And the number of shares bought and sold on this trading day, the number of things bought and sold is called the volume. The volume. And so 1,590,000 shares were bought and sold on that day. Number four says, during 2013, Kim Taylor bought 250 shares of stock issued by Tri-State Manufacturing at $25.80 a share. Kim later sold the shares for $49 per share. 
the broker charges $20 commission per trade. So both when I buy and when I sell, I'm being charged that $20. Calculate the following, and if you have negative amounts, put them in parentheses. That's usually how you mark a negative value. The total cost of the investment, including commission. So we bought 250 shares at $25.80 per share. I gotta find my calculator. So 250 times 2580 would give me 6450. Now that's just the price per share. We also have to have the charge of commission. So they're going to charge us $20 for making that transaction. So 6470 is my total cost including the commission. Then I'm going to sell my stock. I have um, 250 shares. I'm going to sell it for $49 a share. So I'm going to make some money. So 250 times 49 is 12,250. But I have to subtract the commission. So I have to subtract $20 on there to pay my fees. So that would be 12,230. So there's my first answer. There's my second answer. Now it wants to know, did you have a profit or loss on the investment? This one's going to have a profit because I sold it for more than I bought it for. So my number will just be written as the regular number. I don't have to worry about using the parentheses. I'm just going to take the 12,000, whoops, 230. I could write. <laughs> the 12,230 that I sold it for minus the 6470 that I bought it for. So 12,230 minus 6470 means that I had a profit of 5,760. So 5,760 would be my profit. During 2013, Tom Washington bought 200 shares of a stock issued by Goodson Publishing Company at $31.20 a share. Tom later sold the shares for $33.13 per share. The broker charges $35 commission per trade. Calculate the following, write negative amounts, if any, in parentheses. So the total cost of my investment, I bought 200 shares at $31.20 per share. So 200 times 31.20 would give me 62.40. But they're charging a commission of $35 per trade, so I have to add that $35 on. So that would be 62.75 for the total cost, including my commission. I'm then going to turn around and sell my shares. I still have 200 shares. I'm going to sell them for 33.13, so I'm going to make a little bit of money per share. So 200 times 33.13 gives me 66.26, but I have to pay the commission, so I'm going to subtract $35 off of that, minus 35. So I made 65.91 when I sold them. So I bought them for 62.75. I sold them for $65.91. I made a profit. My profit would be the difference. So $65.91 minus $62.75. So $65.91 minus, $65 minus $62.75 means I have a difference of $316. So I made a profit of $316. Number six, during 2013, Barbara Ward bought 275 shares of a stock issued by Atlanta Carpet Mills at $19.49 a share. Barbara later sold the shares for $31.95 per share. The broker charges $8 commission per trade. Calculate the following. Total cost including commission. So we bought 275 shares at $19.49 for each share. 275 times 1949 would give me, I'm going to type that in again, times 1949. 
So I would have 5,359.75. But I had an $8 commission that I had to pay, so I'm gonna add my $8 on. So if I add my $8, my total cost, 5,367.75. The total sales amount less the commission. 275, 275 shares. I'm going to sell them for 31.95, so I'm going to make a good profit there. 275 times 31.95 would be $8,786.25. However, I have to subtract my commission because I have to pay $8 for the transaction, minus $8. So $8,778.25 would be the amount of money that I got from my sale. And again, the sales amount is more than the cost of my investment. So again, I'm going to make a profit. How much profit? 8,778.25 minus 5,367.75. And if I subtract those, I made $3,410.50. There's number one, there's number two, and there's number three answer. Seven, eight, and nine, we're going to calculate some common calculations when you are doing stocks and bonds. Number seven says for 2013, the annual earnings for the Tennessee Electric Company were $5,400,000. The corporation has 3,862,300 shares of common stock outstanding and pays an annual dividend of 81 cents per share. The closing price for a share of common stock was $40 last night. Calculate the following. The first one there wants you to calculate the current yield. The current yield is your annual dividend per share divided by your closing price. So the annual dividend divided by the closing price. So my annual dividend per share is 81 cents. I'm going to divide that by my closing price, which was $40. So. 81 cents divided by $40 is going to give me a decimal. And since this is my current yield, I'm calculating a percentage. So I'm going to get 0 0.02025, but I'm going to calculate it as a percent, so I have to move my decimal two places. And then it says round to two decimal places. And when it says round to two decimal places, it means two places after the decimal. So I'm going to say it's 2.0 and I've got to round that up to a 3, so 2.03% is how I would calculate that current yield. The annual dividend per share divided by the closing price. Then I'm going to do the earnings per share. So I am going to take my annual earnings divided by the number of shares of common stock outstanding. Abbreviate a little bit. And so my annual earnings were 5,400,000. I'm going to divide that by my number of shares, 3862300. Now this is going to be a dollar amount, your earnings per share. So 5,400,000 divided by 3,862,300 gives me 1.39813 and I'm 1.398 da 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 da. So I have to round that eight up, and so 39 has to round up to 40 cents. So a dollar and 40 cents is what my earnings per share. I made $1.40 per share that I purchased. The last one says the price earnings ratio. 
So what I'm doing is taking the earnings per share that I had from that other problem, and I am going to take the closing price divided by that value. So to find the price to earnings ratio, I'm going to take the closing price divided by the earnings per share, which is the answer from number two. My closing price was $40. I'm going to divide that by the $1.40, which was my earnings per share. So 40 divided by 1.40, and we're going to say that then the price to earnings ratio is 28.57. It's 571, and since I'm rounding it off to two decimal places, I just leave the 7 alone since it was 28.571. So for number eight, I'm doing the same calculations it says for 2013, the annual earnings for Blue Star Racing Equipment were $6,800,000. The corporation has 11,975,500 shares of common stock outstanding and pays an annual dividend of 48 cents per share. The closing price for a share of common stock was $30 last night. Calculate the following. So for the current yield, we're taking our annual dividend divided by our closing price. So our annual dividend per share was 48 cents divided by the closing price, which was $30. If we divide that, we get 0 0.016, but we need to change that into a percentage. So we're going to times it by 100% which moves the decimal two places, so 1.6%. We don't have to round that one off because it comes out nice, 1.6%. The earnings per share. For my earnings per share, I'm taking my annual earnings divided by the number of shares of common stock outstanding. And so my annual earnings, $6,800,000, divided by the number of shares, $11,975,500. $11,975,500. So $6,800,000 divided by $11,975,500 gives me... 0.5678. I'm rounding that off to two decimal places. So since there's a seven behind the six, I gotta round that up. So 57 cents is what my earnings per share would be. I made 57 cents a share. And then my price to earnings ratio, I'm gonna take my closing price divided by my PE rate, or my earnings per share, I should say, which is my number two. And so my closing price last night was $30. My earnings per share, 57 cents. So 30 divided by 0.57 gives me 52.63. And there's a one behind there, so I don't have to round that up. So 52.63 to two decimal places. 52.6315, but there's a 1 right behind the 3, so I just leave it, 52.63. And my last one again, using some of those formulas for 2013, the annual earnings for Tennessee Electronic Company were $4 million. The corporation has 3,304,600 shares of common stock outstanding and pays an annual dividend of $0.68 cents per share. The closing price for a share of common stock was $30 last night. Calculate the following. So if I'm going to calculate the current yield, it's the dividends per share, so my annual dividends divided by my closing price. So my annual dividends, $0.68 cents per share, divided by the closing price, $30. So 0.68 divided by 30 gives me 0 0.0226666. I want to change it into a percent, so I'm going to multiply by 100, which moves my decimal two places, and round it off. So 2.27 percent.
2.2% is what I'd round that off to, 2.27%. Then I'm going to calculate the earnings per share, taking my annual earnings and dividing that by my shares of common stock outstanding. So, my annual earnings were four million. My number of shares of stock, three million three hundred four thousand six hundred. So four million divided by three hundred three three million three hundred four thousand six hundred. I get one point two one zero. So a dollar and twenty-one cents. So my earnings per share, a dollar and twenty-one cents per share. And then my price to earnings ratio, I'm going to take my closing price divided by my earnings per share. So my closing price was thirty dollars last night. My earnings per share, a dollar twenty-one. Thirty divided by a dollar twenty-one gives me. 24.793, and since there's a 3 behind there, I don't have to round it, so just 24.79. All right, that is the end of worksheet day 29. Again, if I go slide up to the top, if it lets me slide up to the top, <laughs> that's under the personal finance section under stocks, bonds, and mutual funds.